Let's start talking about some sensory and autonomic anatomy. This is for the labs. So the sympathetic trunk or chain ganglia run right alongside the spinal cord. We have the white ramus communicans and the gray ramus communicans. Remember the white ramus is the preganglionic fiber and the gray ramus is the postganglionic fiber. Um, there are three cervical ganglia, superior, middle, and inferior, and then the sympathetic trunk or chain. You can call it either one. I kind of like calling it the chain gang. You do whatever you want. Um, splanchnic nerves, all right, remember those are the um, sympathetic uh, preganglionic fibers that uh, synapse in a collateral ganglion. Uh, the celiac ganglion at the stomach, superior mesenteric at the top of the intestines, inferior mesenteric at the bottom of the intestines. Um, the four parasympathetic ganglia, the ciliary, goes to the eye, lacrimal gland, all right, pterygopalatine, cranial nerve 7, um, that goes to the nasal mucosa and the lacrimal gland, um, submandibular underneath the mandible, of course, that's cranial nerve 7, the facial nerve, that's for salivation, and the otic ganglion, cranial nerve number 9, glossopharyngeal, that goes to the big giant parotid gland, which is right next to your ear, otic for ear. <clears throat> um, the corpuscle of touch, the Meissner corpuscle, found there uh, in the uh, dermis, all right? So right up at the boundary between epidermis and dermis, those are mostly for light touch. And then the lamellated, old-fashioned name, Pacinian corpuscle, deeper down, and that's for heavier pressure. Uh, on the tongue you have papillae, um, plural papillae, singular papilla, uh, Latin root word means nipple. These are little nipple-like structures. So the valate um, are at the very back. They look like big flying saucers or like big sombreros. Um, and those have a lot of taste buds in them, something like a hundred. Fungiform, fungiform means shaped like a mushroom. Those are um, all over the rest of the surface of the tongue. They have a handful of taste buds in them. I don't know, two, three, four, something like that. Filiform papillae are little tiny ones. They have no taste buds. They're just for texture. Like you know how a cooked spaghetti noodle and a pretzel, you, you could tell it's not just that they taste different, they have a total different texture. That's what filiform papillae are for, detecting texture. So the eye palpebra is the fancy name for eyelid, and since we're taking anatomy and physiology, we now have to know that. Eyebrow just gets its own name. There are other fancier names, we're not gonna deal with them. Um, eyelash, same thing. Lacrimal caruncle, that's a wonderful word, isn't it? Teach that to a three-year-old and listen for the next week as they say a caruncle, a caruncle, a caruncle. That's where you get the little eye boogers, you know, little sleepy seeds um, in the morning. That's actually, there's a drain back there for your tears, all right? The iris is the colored part of your eye. That's actually a big giant muscle. Uh, the sclera is the white part of your eye. The pupil is actually not a thing. It's the lack of a thing. The pupil is a hole in the iris that lets, eye, lets light through. So why is it dark? Because it's dark inside your eyeball, you dumbass. There's no light in there. So, um, yeah, you know, sometimes uh, when people take flash photographs, you know, you got the red eye. What's going on there? Well, the flash is going through the pupil and it's lighting up the blood vessels at the back of your eyeball. And that's what you're seeing. That's what the red eye is. It's the blood vessels all lit up. Okay? That's when you actually get to see inside. And the bulbar conjunctiva. So conjunctiva is a thin membrane that lines the eyeball. We're going to see it also lines the eyelid as well. But on this slide, I just have it showing um, on the eyeball. Your eyeball is like sort of like a light bulb, don't you think? Can't you imagine? Use your imagination. Isn't your eyeball kind of like the end of a light bulb? So that's why it's called the bulbar conjunctiva, because it's the conjunctiva, it's the membrane that's on the light bulb. Now, you can get an irritation of this membrane. It could be viral, it could be bacterial, it could be from chemicals. And what do they call that? They call that when you have an inflammation of the conjunctiva, inflammation, the suffix itis, you have conjunctivitis. People call it pink eye, because normally what happens is whenever you get an infection or an irritation like that, um, your immune system tries to fight it back, and so it brings lots of blood to the surface, and so you get lots of pink from all the blood that's going up to that area. All right, so the lacrimal gland sits on the lateral uh, superior surface of the eyeball, and it makes tears. Um, they get down onto the eye through the lacrimal ducts, 
they then cover your eye, and that's why you blink your eyes unconsciously. That's like, just like the windshield wipers on your car. You know, you're trying to spread the tears all over your eyeball. And tears are good. I mean, they clean the eye. They also have um, antibacterial substances in them to try to keep you from getting conjunctivitis, for example. Um, then the tears drain um, at, at the lacrimal uh, uh, canals. That's right where the lacrimal caruncle is, all right? So the lacrimal ca canals drain into the lacrimal sac, which is up high there in your nose, uh, adjacent to your eye. And then the lacrimal sac drains into the nasolacrimal duct, nasolacrimal. So in other words, your tears drain into your nose, all right? They're produced in the lacrimal gland. They make a journey all the way across your eyeball, and they drain into your nose. That's why whenever you see people crying really hard, they go, <laughs> you know, they have to blow their nose all the time. That's not snot. That's that's uh, the tears are draining through your nose. So when you're sobbing, when you're crying hard, you have to blow your nose all the time. So forget that. Forget him. Just forget him. He's not worth it. Just a bunch of damn chemical electrical signals in your head. Move on, girls. Forget him. Um, so um, levator palpebrae superioris. This is the muscle I've mentioned it before that lifts your upper eyelid. Palpebra, uh, that's eyelid superioris, upper levator, elevator lifts it. Elevator um, palpebrae superioris, the muscle that lifts your upper eyelid. Orbicularis oculi. We covered that before. That's the muscle that makes you uh, wink. Um, the rectus muscles and the oblique muscles. Those are the muscles that move your eyeball. The bulbar conjunctive I just mentioned, it's the conjunctive that's actually on the eyeball. And then there's the palpebral conjunctive. That's the membrane as it wraps around and coats your eyelid. So it's so easy. Bulbar conjunctiva versus palpebral conjunctiva. They're both conjunctiva. One's on your light bulb, the other is on your palpebra, your eyelid. The eyebrow, the eyelash, the cornea is a little clear bubble in front of somebody's eyes. When you look into somebody's eyes and when you look longingly into someone's eyes, no, for God's sake, bleh, barf, don't do that. Um, the little clear bubble you see out there is the cornea. Then the pupil, like I say, is the absence of something. That's the hole in the iris. And then the lens is back behind your eyes. See, you see in the illustration there? You can't see somebody's lens. Sometimes you can. As we get older, our lens gets covered with gunk and gets all cloudy and we call that a cataract, all right? You see that a lot in dogs, like old dogs, you know how they have those kind of bluish eyes? That's when you're actually seeing the lens. But normally if somebody has a healthy lens, it's clear and you can't see that. It's back behind the iris. And then the optic nerve emerges from the very back of your eyeball. That carries visual information to your brain.